Brian Kibler at the desk. And uh, the second semi-final is about to start. Bonnie Hopper versus Neyman. Guys, who do you think is going to take this one? Oh, this is going to be a really tough one. I think neyman has been playing so well over the weekend, it's difficult not to say he's got a really strong advantage here. But as we saw from the uh, one of the earlier sets, Bunny Hopper versus uh, Diggan, he played really, just really solid throughout the whole set. And he said from the first day to today, he's feeling much better. He's probably calmed his nerves a lot more. He's just taken a much more uh, methodical approach to the game. I actually don't think this is a tough decision for me. I think Neyman <laughs> has a big edge here. Not only is he the, the most well-known player coming into this, his lineup is built to beat exactly what Bunny Hopper is playing. So what are the, the key things uh, coming into the lineups? Um, what is the, the ban that he is expecting to, to have? I think he's probably expecting uh, his perhaps his mage to be banned in this particular matchup, simply because the the freeze mage is so strong against uh, so many of Bunny Hopper's decks. Uh, his entire lineup is built to beat decks like Secret Paladin, decks like uh, the Warlock of Zoo, uh, and those are clearly you know features of Bunny Hopper's lineup. But he's even playing Secret Paladin, playing the more aggressive Paladin. Yeah. It might change that dynamic a little bit, so there's definitely some question marks there. Yeah, I think one of the key things is, though, especially with the Hunter versus the Paladin, the game pretty much goes the same way a lot right. of the time. You still have those big blowout turns of Unleash the Hounds or even Explosive Trap as well. All right, and we also want to remind you guys that uh, we'll be unveiling Legendary Minion from Old God set after this match. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, that card might be uh, very interesting. Yeah, I'm excited to see some uh, some new stuff. We've we've definitely seen some awesome stuff so far, and uh, more is better. <laughs> so, who do you guys think will win, uh, Bunny Hopper or Neyman? Uh, let us know on social media hashtag Bunny Hopper or hashtag Neyman uh, to see uh, who do you support. Send your energy and let us know exactly. And uh, guys, you have a clear favorites, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I would like Bunny Hopper to take it, but I just think Neyman's going to. Yeah. And how, how does this, this, uh, this Paladin, the aggressive Paladin, going to fare overall versus Neyman's lineup? Well, interestingly, I, I don't think we've actually even seen Neyman's Warrior deck. Uh, we've seen his, his other decks played so far. And if that Warrior deck is patient, it would make a lot of sense, given the rest of the dynamic of his lineup. That's also quite strong <laughs> against all of, uh, all of Bunny Hopper's decks. So it, it, really, the dynamic is that, as I mentioned before, Neyman's lineup is literally just built to beat pretty much exactly what Bunny Hopper's playing. Talking about Neyman, by the way, the players are ready. So uh, the first player to join this uh, second semifinal will be Neyman. Uh, Neyman hailing from Kazakhstan, uh, as you mentioned before, the most sort of well-known player coming into this event. Uh, many of the other players expressed they did not want to face him. And well, Bunny Hopper's going to have to do just that right now. Absolutely, a very strong player. And uh, the redemption story, it's also something I really enjoy myself. Uh, he's trying to get some money for the wedding, and his fiance, I'm sure, is watching him right now and <laughs> with fingers crossed. Yeah, as, a, as a recently married man, I can respect that. <laughs> I understand how that goes. <laughs> Absolutely. And the second player is Bonnie Hopper. So we have Bunny Hopper, the German. He's just come off a win against one of his friends, Diggan, and I have no doubt straight after that they were already discussing what his grand plan was against Neyman. It is going to be difficult, though, as in Conquest, you have to win with all of your classes, and I really feel his Paladin is going to struggle in this matchup. Yeah, as Paladin, which has been quite strong for him in many of the other matchups against decks like Secret Paladin, is going to be facing decks that are, are much stronger against it. Things like that Freeze Mage, things like the, uh, the Hunter, and even the Midrange Paladin. So many of the Paladins we've seen in this event have been Seeker Paladins, all of them in fact, except for Neyman, who's bringing that really kind of off-the-wall uh, mid-range Paladin. It's weird to call mid-range Paladin the off-the-wall deck. <laughs> Such yeah. a crazy deck, <laughs> what's going oh on? Oh my god, <laughs> mid-range Paladin is so weird. We haven't seen the, even that many cards from this mid-range Paladin, uh, but uh, we can guess there is double Aldor Peacekeeper, probably, right? We've seen Tyrion, we've seen Dr. Boom, but sometimes he was getting hands that were similar to Seeker Paladin uh, or Agro Paladin, like really good uh, opening curve. Yeah, it looks like his deck is really focused on that early game, trying to put a lot of pressure on his opponent's minions with things like uh, the mini-bots, the uh, the zombie chow, haunted creeper, getting that strong early game to just really oppress opponent's ability to deal minion damage. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what you guys think. Uh, you voted for the players, and uh, looking at the poll results. Wow. Whoa, that's. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> looks like Neyman is in the lead here. Bonnie Hopper, um, you just explained that Neyman is in the lead overall lineup wise. But uh, what does Bonnie Hopper have to do, Raven? To, uh, to win this? I, I think the key is just going to be this Paladin deck. I know we've harped on about it a little bit, but he really, I don't even know what matchup he particularly wants with that Paladin deck to try and run into, but whatever it is, he just needs to take an early win, get that out of the way, then focus on some of the more even matchups. Yeah, I, I think that that deck will certainly struggle given the context. Uh, it's possible that that deck could line up all right against Neyman's Paladin deck. We have seen the... Uh, 
the aggro paladin go sort of under the yeah. the secret paladin decks. And the mid-range paladin is kind of similar, except, as we mentioned, Naaman's deck has so many of those cheap minions. Zombie Chow is pretty good against an aggressively oriented paladin deck. Absolutely. And we now know the bans, so the warriors are being banned for both players. We will not see the, the warrior from Naaman. Are we ever going to see the warrior deck? I don't think we have yet. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe in the final. <laughs> I'd love it with something really crazy as well, like something completely off of Face Warrior. Tate's and and, and we just Morgan. never got the chance. We just never Guys, got the chance to I was playing Pirates. You never gave me the yeah. opportunity to play. Come on. So what does it mean that the Warrior is being banned? Was it bad for for Naaman? Um, like both players banned Warrior at the time. My, my, my guess is that he's anticipating this being Patron Warrior, as we mentioned. And Patron Warrior is extremely strong, I feel, uh, against this particular lineup. Yeah, it's just also yet another deck that performs well versus Paladin. Exactly. So yeah. there's just all, like I said, the key to this for Bunny Hopper is going to be winning with this Paladin, and uh, he's just trying to re you know increase the chances of that happening in terms of lineup. And we did see that Nyman's Mage is going to be around, so that's going to be an interesting yeah, one. Yeah, I'm really happy set. to to see the the Mage at some point. But the game one is ready, and we're going to see Paladin versus Hunter. So both really aggressive decks. And uh, who do you guys think has an advantage in this one? I think the the Hunter definitely has to have the edge. Uh, much like Secret Paladin, which we've seen these Hunter decks just roll over throughout this event so far, uh, the, the Aggro Paladin, it can get on the board a little bit faster, has a little bit more of that early game, but still is is vulnerable to the, the aggressive burn and all, all the charge minions. It doesn't have cards like Sludge Belcher that some of the Secret Paladin decks saw, and we saw even with Sludge Belcher, those decks just fell behind. And also, Divine Favor. Not the best card versus Face Hunter uh, as a deck that's not really known for having a large hand for most of the game. So that Divine Favor almost certainly is going to get thrown away from Bunny Hopper, and he will hope it is the bottom card of his deck, no doubt, in this matchup. Absolutely. And uh, looking at the player's hands, uh, Naaman already having the Leper Gnome, a Wolf Rider for some extra damage, and Unleash the Hounds being overall good uh, in this matchup because of Master for Battle and the fact that Paladin wants to have some minions to be able to pressure. Yeah, Unleash is great in this matchup. Not only is there the Master for Battle, but just fundamentally, the aggro Paladin deck really plays wide. It plays a bunch of small minions. Hero power, even. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point of this deck, is to play out a, a wide uh, wide range of minions. And uh, Unleash, in many cases, you know, in some cases, is used to clear those. In this case, I imagine, is very likely to go phase. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially because you can all, you know, in a perfect world for the Hunter as well, they can build up a board, you can play Explosive Trap Unleash, go face, and then force him to trade into you, and you just gain so much extra damage. And Haunted Creeper for Naaman here matches up very well against the uh, the Leper Gnome on Bunny Hopper's side. I, I, I kind of wanted to see just Leper Gnome versus Leper Gnome on turn one to set the pace for what's, <laughs> what's going to happen here. Everyone's feeling real icky, but uh, the, the Haunted Creeper lines up much better. Get yeah, the, the real damage The two done. Leper Gnomes just keep hitting Ev face. Everyone's just, just hugging like, each other. Trade? No, 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 here. <laughs> so guys, what do you think about Bunny Hopper's position now. Uh, he has the Leper Gnome uh, that uh, will Shine. probably go to face and the Shield Mini Bot. Um, is that okay opening or do you hope to have something else? I mean, th this is this is kind of the, the draw that you're looking for is, you know, there's just minion into minion into minion. Um, it, it doesn't happen to match up very well against what Naaman has here, that that uh, Haunted Creeper clears the uh, the one health minions and threatens for more. Uh, the Creeper the creeper's solid because it does answer the same thing from Naaman. It's going to be able to eat those one ones, whereas it would just it would just kill the uh, the divine shield of that mini bot. But uh, Naaman just has that owl uh, they just drew, which clears off the ability of that uh, creeper to spawn anything else. Yeah, and what was nice from putting up there, he I think he chose the creeper over the mini bot mainly because a juggler turn yeah. two would be very rough, whereas the creeper can't. It can't die creep on creeper, mm -hmm. um, and then if it runs into the lepanome, the two juggles aren't really going to do anything to yeah. the haunted creeper on that side. Also, of the in the very anyway. beginning of the game, I think uh, the minions are more important than damage to face. So you you are uh, you can take a couple of points of damage, maybe even go down to twenty. But if you're winning on board, you will be in a good position to get that more extra damage till turn five, and then just finish the game with burst. Yeah, it normally works out that around turn four is when the hunter normally wants to hero power every single turn because you start to be able to drop a two drop hero power and then go into three drop hero power quite easily, whereas the early turns, as you quite rightly said, Nimsh, are more about just trying to solidify your board control and just, then just push on that with the extra first damage. All right, Salsi Deckhand, um, is this board to cast uh, Unleash the Hounds Brian or is it not yet? Uh, well, it, it would allow Naaman to clear off all of Bunny Hopper's minions. Uh, he would still have some left over to go face. He could potentially take out the uh, both of the two attack minions. and. The thing that's important here uh, is that Bunny Hopper, he needs those minions to win. He has he doesn't really have those individual big powerful minions like the mysterious challenge of the secret the secret paladin decks. So he needs to get in you know these incremental bits of damage with this wider board. Uh, I think that they're yeah, we we're gonna see the unleash from Na Oh no, he's 
<laughs> just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, He's playing be, with you. <laughs> he might be thinking about Divine Favor. Like we've mentioned, this it's not good in this in this matchup, but uh, there are four cards for Neyman, and if there is Divine Favor being drawn, uh, abusive, Fool's Divine is actually a pretty good card. Yeah, I think the secondary reason for the Unleash as well is because he's just trying to Explosive Trap. Mm -hmm. So it, they're the two cards that will really swing the board either way. And uh, because he, he, he has Unleash and he can make a you know, pretty good turn this turn, and then worst case scenario, set, you know, Muster and a one drop comes out, he can Explosive Trap afterwards. And this play from Neyman, I think, is one that, that a lot of people might not make, where he actually keeps his Owl going face rather than, oh, he can trade his 2-1 two, his two one into your 2-2. Two two. But he recognizes that his road to victory is through damage. And if Bunny Hopper uses his 2-2 his two two to take a value trade on the 1-1, one one, he's just going to get another hit in with that Owl, and that's all he wants from it is more damage. Absolutely. But still, it's really interesting that both decks are face decks, and we see a lot of minion trading from the very beginning of the game. At, well, the player who's able to establish repeat damage from the minions on board is at a huge advantage in that, in that kind of situation. Uh, Bunny Hopper here, he does have that Consecration in his hand, uh, which can potentially give him a, a pretty big edge uh, if uh, Naiman does end up flooding the board with a bunch of minions. This is interesting now, though, because he could, if he really wanted to, trade into the Creeper, play Explosive Trap, and uh, play Glaive Zooka, but more realistically, Hero Power if he chooses mm -hmm. to trade. He could just Glaive Zooka, Explosive Trap, and then go face with the minion to, again, push for more damage. But I really like trying to get the Glaive Zooka online this turn, just because you can, again, just use it turn to, uh, the next turn after and just keep pushing with that damage. Ex Explosive Trap is really interesting overall because there are not that many buffs you can get as, the, as Bunny Hopper. There is the Keeper of Ulderman that can maybe change one minion into 3-3 and, and put but I think over time, your hero power will favor the game where you just uh, wait. But on the other hand, Explosive Trap is one of those tools to just uh, lock Paladin at some point, maybe uh, further in the game, where you are closer to winning. Yeah, that was kind of interesting there, though. Like, the, the actual sequencing of that, normally you want to Glaive Zooker onto a single minion if you can, so you just guarantee instant damage. Um, and he chose to Glaive Zooker after the Creeper came down. And uh, it's just a, just an interesting play because he didn't even trade into the mini bot then to just make his creeper better than his opponent's. Mm -hmm. So why was that, Brian? Can you can you explain? Yeah, I'm actually trying to work out yeah, why same, he might attack he, why he might attack the one one rather than the two one. It's 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 a little bit odd, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to process it myself exactly what the motivation behind that might be. Hmm. Well, just the Glevzuka landing on the hunter creeper um, means that the hunter creeper attacking the hunter creeper will die as well. So there is another minion with. Uh, a lot of attack, and if you attack into the Hunting Creeper, you're also creating two spiders on board, so you're increasing the damage. But. Well, I was, I was actually specifically talking about why he wouldn't attack the, the, the mini bot, why he'd attack the 1 1 rather yeah, than the mini bot, uh, which does open up the consecration play here for Bunny Hopper since he has the, the two attack minion to attack into it. All right, so now Naiman, explosive trap, not really doing that much. Uh, Juggler, though, can work. Yeah, but this is, I was going to say, I was interested to see whether he would just wolf ride a hero power, mm -hmm. or if he wasn't going to hero power this turn, he was definitely going to use Explosive Trap. Because like I said, with this turn, you, you want to just guarantee as much damage yeah. as possible every single turn. If you can play hero power, fantastic, but the Explosive Trap just acts like a delayed hero power anyway. So this is tricky okay. though, because we know it's Explosive Trap, but Bunny Hopper doesn't. Right. And I believe Nyman was playing uh, Snake Trap, and yeah. Snake Trap with combination with Juggler is so good. Yeah, this is definitely a spot for Bunny Hopper that's a bit awkward, because the threat Watch of Snake Trap makes makes attacking into either of Naaman's minions really scary. But if he just tries to test, quote unquote, by going to face, <laughs> yeah. he's just going to lose the ability to attack and kill that knife juggler entirely. Yeah. So this is kind of the squeeze. This is the reason you play these two types of traps together. They create, they create this kind of pincher that puts your opponent in a very awkward so spot. So now, now the big question is, what is lesser mm -hmm. evil, Raven? Um, what, what's better for Bunny Hopper? Uh, I think the expl like testing for explosive is actually better. It's, re it's really difficult because you can't leave the juggler on, but if you give the hunter even more minions after you've already used Consecrate, you're never going to get this board. And unlike Hunter, the Paladin needs the minions to win, whereas the hunter can just sit in hero power every turn. And, you know, it might take a while, but he's going to win eventually. He makes a good read right there and uh, gets rewarded for it, but uh, Nyman can just start going to face. They even maybe kill the 4 free. Nope. nope. Face. Why? Good play. Yeah, Good. Why, why would you do something as crazy as trade when you can go face with a 3-1? Important to note, his opponent has a face, and thus, <laughs> that face is being attacked. And there are no taunts, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, face is a good target. The bunny hopper knows that there is a solid chap, so he will be hesitant attacking face himself. That would force the trade, in a way. Yep. Yeah, so but, 
Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, that trade was good just because it, yeah, because of the trap that's down, it'll just force the, the Shredder to go into a... Uh, well, now to get just props one, either one way or the other, but it just, uh, again, just, just using this trap to his advantage is insane. Like, and the fact that his opponent knows he's playing dual traps probably doesn't even help Bunny Hopper. Well, let's see what comes out of the Shredder with the pilot today. Oh, oh. Not a good one. I don't yeah. know how a Scarab can drive a Shredder, but here it is. And it now, proved you wrong. Well, it's not the best, but there's a lot of minions, and uh, Nyman only has a quick shot. He will be able to draw a card possibly this turn. Yep. Yeah. Mad oh. Scientist, quick shot, I'm sure to the face. And he's really looking for either another Explosive Trap or a Unleash the Hounds at this point. Either of those would represent a huge amount of damage. Kill Command as well doesn't have a Beast right now, but that still is uh, pretty scary. Yeah, I think the key thing as well is Bunny Hop is low on cards. And as we said earlier, Divine Spirit's uh, not going to help him. Divine Favor, sorry, is not going to help him. Um, and the Pounding can't really just burst for that much damage with one or two cards. Normally they require it the board or some like insane combo and like Blessing of Kings, maybe a Blessing of Might, but Options. now with two damage a turn, he's only on nine, Bunny Hopper's on nine health. Well, Cog Hammer I think is a very good draw here from Bunny Hopper. It does give him uh, a taunt, which can prevent a charge minion from, uh, from getting guaranteed uh, value here. Uh, the key is though, as you mentioned, the fact that there really isn't much of a clock here from Bunny Hopper. He, he does have a lot of damage, but Naaman is so high in life that it's going to take him quite a while to actually win the game. And there's so many draws like that Unleash or additional Kill Command that can just end the game on the spot. I'm there's pretty sure Naaman is high on life at this moment in time. <laughs> He's doing pretty well. By the way, there is also one more added benefit, that small uh, added benefit to the Cog Hammer, because this means that Mad Scientist will not be able to trade with the 2-1 and uh, mm -hmm. maybe bring an Explosive Chop. Yeah, we, we have seen just the one explosive trap from Naaman so far. I'm not sure if we, we have the information as to whether they're a possible second. Uh, but this does put three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, nine, oh that's, and that should be enough. That's for sure. Well, he, he gets six from this. Yeah, it's got to be it. Yeah, it's seven damage from here. That's a lot. Is what it it down to it. You fact, see that smile yeah. on Buddy Hopper's face. Okay. And, and yeah. the main fact there was it, uh, it engaged Kill Command, so he can kill Command Hero Power and just go through quite easily. So, oh, what a draw. Yes, Neyman is going to win this first game versus the Paladin, uh, locking his Hunter. What does this mean with regards to the lineups? Well, I, th I think that this this was one of the decks that Neyman had a, a big edge with. There are, are uh, pretty much all of his decks, I think, except for perhaps the Warrior, which is banned that the, the Face Hunter is pretty strong against. Maybe the Druid is reasonable against it, but it's so strong against that Paladin, so strong against that Warlock. I, I still wonder how will Mage do overall. Uh, so this this Torch Mage versus possible Druid, Paladin, or Warlock. Yeah, it, I think uh, Naaman's definitely go going to want to lock in that Mage and get the Warlock matchup out of those two. Uh, I suppose the Paladin's okay. It's just sometimes if the draws are there, the Paladin can move just too fast. And with the Divine Shields and the additional buffs there. Yeah, the, the aggressive Paladin deck is better suited to beating the Freeze Mage than a lot of the uh, the Seeker Paladin decks or Midrange Paladin decks, simply because it puts on pressure faster. Uh, so if he does happen to have one of those awkward draws where things don't come together, uh, he can just end the game pretty quickly. Absolutely. And uh, well, Naiman is in a very good position right now. We actually spoke to him yesterday, so let's see what he has to say. That's going to wrap it up. Naiman is our first player into the top four, getting one step closer to becoming the Winter European Champion. The people who of course supported me on Twitter and like uh, social media really appreciate the support and thanks to us. I'm going to rest, I'm going to talk with my family, with my brother, who is my older brother, who, um, whom I really love. And he's really uh, giving me inspiration as well, as well as my fiance and the whole family. Well, for the future opponents, I just say that prepare for the battle and hopefully it's going to be a good one. It's so great to have the support of your family, right? When you're playing card games and uh, everybody's rooting for you at home. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we we saw la just last weekend, you know, Amnesiac with his his mom here. Uh, definitely, you know, I, I had a lot of support from my family uh, growing up playing games, which is pretty unusual for a lot of people. So it's it's great to see when uh, when that sort of support structure is there. Yeah, Absolutely, it's, it's good as well that he can uh, he just recognize that after that day, he was just like, right, I'm just going to collect myself, speak to some family, speak to some friends, and then just prepare like mentally for the next day. 
And what do you guys uh, think uh, Naaman is going to select now as his next deck? And uh, does Bunny Hopper stay with the Paladin or do you change things now? I think that, that Bunny Hopper may stick with that Paladin deck. I think that it, it is probably his... Uh, oh, he does choose to switch things up. He's going to play his Druid. And uh, Naaman with that mid-range Paladin deck. Yeah, and what opening is that? Zombie Chow, Aldor, Quartermaster, and Master for Battle. Uh, do you even keep the Quartermaster? Because it's, it seems really strong Well, overall. given that he has the coin, the having the coin with Muster, you can potentially play that Chow turn one and then co uh, play the, the Muster on three. If your opponent doesn't swipe you, coin Quartermaster on four can be absolutely devastating against a Druid deck. Yeah, I think that that's the problem though, isn't it? If your opponent does have swipe, then you've just sat with Quartermaster and it might be a bit more difficult to try and work that in in the following turn and you'd much rather have something else. So it's a bit of a tough call. For, I, for one, always feel like Druid has swipe when he needs it. <laughs> so I would definitely yeah. just instantly know Quartermaster. You stay away till later when I can play them both in the same turn, maybe. On, well, the, other hand, on the other hand, Bunny Hopper actually having the Innervate and Paladin Shredder, you, you, you have to keep it versus Paladin, I believe. Uh, I mean, Innervate Shredder against the mid-range Paladin, I think, is substantially weaker because of that Elder Peacekeeper. Uh, I still think it is likely, as we see, Bunny Hopper keeps it and... Uh, it's still a strong play, but it, it is more open to being punished than it is against other versions. Yeah. yeah. I think as well, because it, because it is the Shredder and not something else like uh, like the Shade, then it's, you know, Shredder's very sticky anyway. It's going to be dealt with, and then there's still another minion to work with. I actually see Naaman did keep his entire hand. Yeah. So, so what, he, what else? Uh, he's actually on that exact that exact plan of yep. the uh, the muster into coin quartermaster. It looks like right now his, he's going to have the turn two hero power, turn three muster, turn four coin that quartermaster. And right now Bunny Hopper does not have a swipe. So what does what does it tell Bunny Hopper? Like your opponent is playing midrange paladin and he just kept full hand. <laughs> it is definitely. Uh, it's definitely scary because anytime your opponent doesn't mulligan, you're just like, wait, did I miss it? You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you're if you're intently, you know, staring at that hand, like, okay, trying to keep track, which is an important thing to do yeah. because it does give information. Uh, it, it's got to be it's got to be definitely pretty scary to figure out what could be there. Yeah, and I think in terms of mid range paladin specifically, it almost always tells you in this specific matchup that the paladin can curve really well because mm -hmm. it's not like in other matchups where as warrior you keep despite in certain matchups yeah. just because it's good, but it doesn't necessarily mean the rest of your hand is going to curve perfectly. You might just have despite or page, but in mid range paladin, not really looking for anything too specific against druid. They just want to curve out and then overwhelm them. Yeah, we actually see Bunny Hopper choose not to go with that innervate, and I think from this perspective, uh, it, given this hand. I, I definitely like his choice there. Uh, if he did just innervate out that Shredder, especially if it happened to get Peacekeeper, he has no play for several turns. Absolutely. It's, it shows only that he knows really how to play the Druid. A lot of uh, people who are not experienced with Druid, they would innervate first to be able to have a minion on board, but then they just struggle with the curve. And here, Bunny Hopper will be able to, to react. But yeah. overall, this matchup is, is good for, for Naaman. And uh, what does Bunny Hopper need to do to, to be able to win? Well, here he, he still has that innervate. He can innervate out one of the fives. I assume it's going to be this uh, druid in bear form. That Where gives him the I shredder on four. So he still has a, a pretty strong curve here. Uh, not quite as strong as it could be, but Naaman here, I'm curious if we're going to see the if he sticks with that muster into quartermaster plan or does just choose to Aldor this uh, innervated bear. Well, it seems like even if he Aldors, those minions still do not contest the bear that much, and the bear is, uh, keeps to be annoying. If he goes for a master, he has that way that we discussed before. Yeah, and I think if I'm honest, he manages to pull off the muster with the coin quartermaster, it could actually sort of seal the game out pretty early. There's still no direct removal, maybe force of nature, but that's still a fair few turns away for the druid, so that could just overwhelm him. Oh! oh what was I? Awesome. Forget everything I just that said. Was... He just swipes him. Never mind. Yeah, that's that it. was the nightmare for Naaman there. Uh, exactly the card he did not want to see. The swipe will clear off his entire board, and I have to imagine Bunny Hopper goes for it at this point. Yeah, that's uh, absolutely that will uh, that will happen, and uh, that's a great play. But on the other hand, even well, after the swipe, it's still still not that bad for Naaman overall because he can just kill the bear next turn and uh, maybe coin this, the Belcher. In the, the, Belcher. Th the thing is that we haven't seen that much of this deck from Naaman. We have not seen Quartermaster yet, so it's possible. And Bunny Hopper does play it safe, go for the swipe. Doesn't want to get coin quarter mastered, but it makes sense. It does, but you could imagine a world in which he's like, "Oh, I, you know, I haven't seen this card from his deck yet. I'm not going to necessarily play around it." And does just, "Oh, I'm going to play a pilot shredder." Yeah, I think the idea there was because he could push for four damage with the bear, and then 
almost certainly guaranteeing an additional four with the trade in next turn. Like suddenly the pilot is on 17 and the druid is untouched in this match. So, and, and he's slowly edging towards those turns. He can drop shredder next turn, and then as soon as he lands onto boom, he's already threatening lethal almost every single turn from the druid. Yeah, but still, it seems that Neyman has in a really good spot right now with the sludge belcher into sludge belcher, and, and belcher itself just counters the shredder next turn. Uh, he gets living roots. Is it okay to play it just uh, as one ones to be able to contest the the, the belcher? I, I, this, I think the Bunny Hopper's position here is pretty poor. I, I, uh, particularly given that there is that Lights Justice on the other side, the, the Shredder and then and then the uh, Living Roots does not look pretty, particularly appealing to me. Uh, and then Naaman, he's, he is at pretty high life total here. You know, or rather, uh, Naaman's a pretty low life total. As I say exactly yeah. the opposite yeah. of what yeah. I mean. <laughs> what? Hey, as long as it's not zero, right? It's fine. <laughs> So this is you know, still a pretty strong spot for Naaman. Has a second sludge bait in Belcher. Is able to remove those uh, living roots. And uh, yeah, I, I'm curious what exactly what we'll see. Yeah, he just goes face here. Yeah, I, I like that. The, mm -hmm. the, the minions are going to die anyway because this thing's like hero power. Do, does really the killing the 1-1 one, one worth more than actually trying to deal some damage to Bunny Hopper? Because although Naaman's looking really good at the moment, he still needs to finish the game out. Ooh, absolutely. Uh, that is interesting. Yeah, can he hit with the knife into the free one? I was wondering whether he was going to force of nature then instead. Yeah, just I for the additional juggles and potentially clear the two bigger parts of each belcher. Off. Right, I, I was actually thinking about that, but I think that given the game state, the fact that that Naaman is down so low, holding onto that force of nature in case you draw a savage roar is uh, definitely pretty appealing. Yeah, especially because he has he has Doctor Boom next turn, or he can even use Keeper of the Grove to owl the bit Belcher if he feels he needs to. But I'm guessing it is going to be the Doctor Boom next turn. Yeah, but there is this equality uh, from last turn, and uh, it might work really well versus Doctor Boom and the bombs as well. Yeah, I think the only issue with the equality is it's the the Boom bots are the real threat now. I think Doctor Boom can be dealt with with the add or Peacekeeper or equality, but if the Boom bots hit face for two. Then Naaman's gonna need some healing if that savage draw gets top deck. Speaking of hitting face, Naaman, you saw roll his eyes there as all as so many of his knives go face when he really needed one of them to, to and to one more of them to hit a minion. Now he can't clear both of these. Yeah, so it, it's really Should weird I? because if he attacks with the weapon into the five one, that's uh, he drops to eleven, and he was already low. But at eleven, it's it's really dangerous versus the druid because then maybe you don't even need the combo to finish the game. Just like a swipe and force of nature and maybe hero power. Ugh. Just <laughs> right in the face. <laughs> and now, I mean, Bunny Hopper, he has boom with knife juggler, which is not something that comes up all that often in this deck. What about well, you don't have knife jugglers in yep. it. <laughs> what about force of nature as well? Yeah, force it's of nature is also very very attractive here. It can potentially clear out the you know, almost the entire board depending on how the knives go. So which is better, Raven? Would you play boom or force of nature? Uh, it's a real tough one. I think I would probably still lean towards Boom. You're not expecting that much burst from the Paladin, and if you know already, these Boom bots could cause havoc. And if you, if your opponent's going to answer Doctor Boom with anything that isn't really BGH, everything feels a bit harder to deal with. Honestly, you know, a quality consecrate. But I, I just think at this point, Force of Nature is so important that if he draws Savage Roar, the game just ends. Yeah, yeah, I do agree that I think Boom right now was a bit better because of the bombs that you mentioned, Brian. And if the bombs uh, land on face, you can just finish the game with Force of Nature overall and maybe keep her damage. It's eight damage to face if you look at it. And Naaman, Naaman is just so low that the, the threat of being able to close up the game with that Savage Roar, I think, is huge. And he does just choose to play the boom. Where are these knives going to go? I like the attack first. So three knives flying. All right, that's... They were well distributed. Didn't actually kill anything, so... And Naaman does have this equality if he wants to uh, try and clear this board up. So equality, and then he can play how many minions? He'll have five mana open. He can play other Peacekeeper if he chooses to, do or just uh, Iron Big Out, maybe sign as one of the bombs. Do you think he has to owl one of the bombs first? Because, you know, equality isn't going to affect the owl that scary. much. <laughs> uh, and, you know, having the additional minions on board for the other bomb anyway, I don't know. I just feel like a boom bot to, for, like, to face for four suddenly opens you up to a lot more options. Like, you just die to Force of Nature. It's also kind of scary to use the equality here when you kind of need your board a little bit, and yet he does choose to go with the owl on the boom bot. And, uh, oh, one boom bot down. Oh, that guy took four to the face. <laughs> oh, I, I got this. Just Doesn't in front really of the to. bomb right there. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have to really quality this board. Like, he can just go for all the peacekeeper. But on the other hand, then boom being a 1-7 is still a bit dangerous. 
Yeah, he, he's gonna go ahead and save his equality. It, it looks like he's he's already in such a bad spot if his opponent does have something like Savage Roar, or rather, Savage Roar, yeah. <laughs> that the additional body is not really gonna, gonna be a terribly big deal, and can save that if his opponent plays something else pretty big. Well, the idea here is, if he has combo, he wins anyway, so why do you need to equality, oh, right? But the silence effect from the uh, getting the, the Alder Silence here is actually just gonna close out the game. Nice, guys. Yeah. yeah, 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 so good. Wow, all right, so Dr. Boom will connect to face. That's something that a lot of players overlook because you think about silencing only the opposing minions and then suddenly, well, Dr. Boom can just hit for face. Yeah, so the uh, the silence from the Keeper does close things out for Bunny Hopper, who is able to tie this back up at one to one. Okay, so now Druid is out. Um, is Was that the deck uh, that was threatening Mage? Not really, we've, we've seen uh, Mage actually winning versus Druid before. Yeah, uh, I think the uh, I think the faster mage deck that's becoming more popular now. I think it's Laughing's List ori originally. Uh, it just fares much better because it doesn't give the druid as much time normally. But you know, druid still do, does pretty good, right? It's one of the decks you do want against freeze mage, regardless. I, th I think that we've seen some kind of anomalous results from some of the druid versus freeze mage matchups so far uh, this event. I do think that the druid is still favored even yeah. against this version of freeze mage. But as far as decks for Bunny Hopper to win with, druid is probably the the least uh, least threatening for Nyman at that point. Absolutely. So we are at 1-1 for now, and we got a chance to speak to Nyman about getting a second chance in Hearthstone and a shot at Redemption. We started to play Hearthstone after the World of Warcraft. We started to play World of Warcraft with my friends, with whom we were living in the United States. And after getting back to Kazakhstan, we realized that it's not possible to play it because of the latency. So I started playing Hearthstone, and uh, the problem which I faced is that I was uh, playing only one class. So I've been a Hunter player for like a year. I was disenchanting other cards. I was making really innovative and pretty interesting Hunter decks for the mid-range Hunter. I've met people who were on team Manacost, which is a Russian team. And they're the ones who invited me to join the team. So when I joined the team, players who were on the team finally taught me not to disenchant other cards which don't belong to Hunter. And they also uh, started to teach me to play other classes. Uh, so after performing well during my first uh, offline event, which was in England, which is called Gfinity, I finished third fourth. I got attention from uh, really good teams like Team Dignitas, I was in Team Dignitas for like a week, then I heard the news about me being banned. Uh, I felt really depressed. I thought that I'm gonna retire from Hearthstone. I'm not gonna continue playing. Uh, I felt really bad. The reason for, uh, which kept me motivated and which finally led me to, for creating a new account was my fiance. My fiance is the one who saw the potential who saw the strengths in me and as well as the knowledge of the game itself. Uh, the conversation with my fiance wasn't more like a dialogue, it was more like a monologue. She was the one who said that I should make a, create a new account, I should keep uh, practicing, keep playing in tournaments, and eventually I'm gonna get to BlizzCon. Uh, I made a really huge mistake in my life and I got punished for that, but I got the second chance, and this is why I'm here. I've actually met Naiman at Jfinity for the first time, and uh, he was already a great guy right there. I, I had high hopes for him, and it was really unfortunate to see him uh, disappear from the stage. But uh, now he's back, and uh, he's rolling. He's here in the second semifinal, uh, really close to advancing to the final himself. Yeah, he was the player who was really the favorite uh, for among many uh, many sort of pundits coming into this event, and uh, has not proved them wrong. He uh, you know made his way through the groups two and zero, and uh, you know now just needs to get through Bunny Hopper to make it all the way to the final. Absolutely. I was interested as well because he was actually um, talking to him before the event. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'm just super confident. I'll be fine. I'll make it." And it's just like, "Oh okay." And so far <laughs> he's, he's just doing it. So it's like, just no, like no, that. No. It's just not often you see like a lot of the super confident players actually you know cash in on what they're saying. Well, if every player is super confident, then one of them is going to win. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They that's have true. to be confident, right? Because like coming into this kind of tournament, you have to know you're going to win. If you think about losing, you're just going to get defeated at some point. You, you need to take those risks overall. All right, guys. Uh, what do you think those players are going to select uh, for the next match? We have a Paladin and a Warlock open for Bunny, and we have Mage 
and Paladin for Naaman. Well, these are the two decks in Bunny Hopper's lineup that Naaman's lineup is really built to beat. Uh, he has that mid-range Paladin deck, which really is built to beat these uh, minion-focused decks, as well as, as we see, Freeze Mage, which again is so strong against minion-focused strategies. Absolutely. This this Torch Mage Raven, can you remind me how this deck works? Because it's a bit different. There is no Antonidas in it. Yeah, it doesn't really re uh, rely on Antonidas like previous versions of Freeze Mage to actually get the win. What it does have, though, is, as we said, that, you know, earlier some Torches that decide to stack up for quite a fair amount of damage over the course of a few turns. So it's just it can be much more direct. And a lot of the time as well, it doesn't really rely on Alex Straza either. You know, you can actually just have so much burst in your deck and, and normally a higher rate of card draw, instant card draw with, like, Novice Engineer to just cycle through faster and then just go straight to the face. Yeah, it functions a little less like a control deck and yeah. a little more like just a, a burn you down combo deck. It's just trying to assemble 30 points of damage over the course of the game and uh, just stop you incrementally from killing it along the way. Absolutely. I think one of the creators of the deck, um, laughing, he called it a face hunter sometimes. Like you, <laughs> you go face with the burn and, and that's what you do. Because the torch provides so much damage overall. Well, you know, hashtag torch face or hashtag, yeah, hashtag face <laughs> torch. Yeah. You know, like it's one or the other. <laughs> yeah, what's really scary when you're playing against this deck is a lot of the time you can't see it coming. Normally, in previous versions of Freeze Mage, it's very, you, you know, there are some very uh, simple signifiers that say, like, okay, he's going to do this, he's going he's gonna to play Antonidas, and he's clearly got an Ice Lance or two, and then it sets up X amount of turns. Whereas this deck, you can just almost just spam you burn straight to face and just go for it and it can come out of nowhere sometimes especially if Emperor Thorison comes down. And the key in this particular Actions. matchup is it still has those freeze tools. Things like the uh, the Frost Novas, the Blizzards, Doomsayers, all those tools that allow you to to really shut down uh, what your opponent's doing. All right, so who do you guys think has an edge here? Uh, the aggressive Paladin has Divine Favor, so with the Mage draws too many cards, he will be able to replenish the hand. But uh, who has an edge overall? The problem with Divine Favor in this matchup is that so many of your cards just don't do very much. You can you can use Divine Favor and draw, you know, four cards, but when your four cards are still just Argent Squires and Muster for Battles, those just don't have a high enough impact on the board uh, it, to actually cause the pace of the game to really change very much. So would yeah. you say Mage has an advantage in this matchup? Absolutely. I think that Naaman is, mm -hmm. is a pretty big favorite here. Yeah. We Sorry, I was going to say, I think, I think Bunny Hopper as well, like, looking at his actual opening hand, it's probably as good as it was going to get. And more, most importantly, he does have the Owl, because if he loses the board once, I feel like it's going to be impossible for him to drag it back again. Because as we said in the previous set, that that's, uh, or the set before that, that's how he's going to do his damage. He needs those minions to stick on the board. Yeah, that Iron Beak Owl is probably the most important card, actually, in yep. Bunny Hopper's deck. We do see the Doomsayer in Naaman's hand, and uh, being able to shut down that Doomsayer from being able to clear your board is an enormous, options, enormous options. factor in this game. And you can actually play the Doomsayer if, even without the freezes to stop the early aggression from the Paladin because if you uh, rule the early game as this mage, you will have enough time then to play the Blizzards, play the Frost Novas, and maybe uh, burn the Paladin down. So at the moment, do you guys think, like even though mage has an advantage, Bunny Hopper still has a chance with this specific hand, right? Uh, certainly. This is, this is definitely the kind of hand that uh, Bunny Hopper needs in order to win the game. Yeah, I think that the only maybe one more card he's looking for is uh, a Cog Hammer as well, because that just makes it a bit more difficult for the Freeze Mage to clear off the minions. And also, that is still six damage over a few turns, over three turns. Uh, so it's just pushing for more damage. But other than that, this is pretty much the hand you're going to want. Yeah, he would love also to find, find something like Blessing of Kings, yeah. just things that improve his clock, because that's what this is about. It's about Bunny Hopper needing to use the admittedly fairly small window that he may be able to get from that Iron Beak Owl to push enough damage to actually win the game because despite being this aggressive deck, it doesn't have much burst. So if Naaman is able to get to the stage where he's freezing the board uh, and setting up things like his ice blocks, that can make it very difficult for Bunny Hopper to close out the game. I think this turn overall is uh, pretty good for him and he, he is thinking if uh, he wants to overextend mm -hmm. or not, but uh, I think it's fine if you play most of the cards um, because there is no Cone of Cold in this mage deck. Normally, uh, you have one in Freeze Mages, but not in the Torch, like, you do cut it. Yeah, I was going to say, one of the things is going to be weighing up. A lot of the time, you do feel good about Silence in the first Scientist, because if that, if the Ice blocks the bottom card in the deck, you don't want it, you know, getting pulled out straight away, so you know it's there. So that was a, it was a good decision, I think. I think it was okay, but I think he's going to get punished for it come next turn when he can play Doomsayer, Frost Nova, and pretty much lock this board down. Yeah, that, that, that was a, uh, I don't know, I don't know about that play from Bunny Hopper there with the, uh, the, the Owl is so key against the Doomsayer, and Doomsayer is such a key card in this matchup that you are able to prevent them from getting that uh, that 
secret off of the Mad Scientist, but you're walking right into the possibility of Frost of a Doomsayer on turn five. Yeah. Uh, why do you think he played it anyway? None Maybe he thinks steal. like this matchup is so bad that he just has to hope there is no Doomsayer Frozen Nova? I think that's totally reasonable too. I think that he may just you know be hoping that that this gives him a, an aggressive enough position that he's able to win the game if that combination is not there. But uh, for Bunny Hopper, it's going to be very unfortunate that this is exactly what Neyman has. Yeah, and to be fair to Bunny Hopper, like look at Neyman's health. He's on 16, mm -hmm. and yeah. if he, if the freeze wasn't there this turn, and it's it happens, you know, the, not all freeze mages have Frost Nova Doomsayer on turn five ready uh, ready to go. But if he didn't have the freeze, then he could push for so much more damage next turn and just close the game out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, if that owl was there in the hands and just stopping the Doomsayer, it would be devastating for... Well, not really that devastating for Neyman because he still has a blizzard, but... Yeah, I think one of the things as well is if he didn't owl the scientist, maybe the scientist draws Ice Barrier. So then he's on eight more health anyway. So, you know, it's really, it's, it's difficult. He did get punished with the Frost Nova Doomsayer, but I completely understand Bunny Hopper's play there. Yeah, sometimes you know, when you're in a, uh, playing a matchup where you feel like you have a significant disadvantage, sometimes your best option is to take these very high-risk yeah. plays and simply hope your opponent doesn't have the answer. And now the big question is, uh, what can you do now? This is exactly what Neyman Report wanted. Clear board, not much pressure, ice barrier, plus eight health. So it looks really good for Neyman. Yeah, the, the uh, muster here is kind of food for the Acolyte pain. It's the really, the really sad thing for Bunny Hopper here. The Acolyte, uh, Neyman will be able to get those draws off of it without even having to spend his mana on Fire Blast. He'll be able to use Fire Blast to just protect his, his life total by killing minions. Yeah, and uh, even if the Owl come down last turn, Neyman had to follow up of Blizzard anyway. So, you know, he's still got that safety net, which uh, I imagine we might well actually see this turn. Just Blizzard the board all the way back down. You just burnt a muster. And what you don't want to do is give the Paladin the option for these buff cards like Blessing of Kings. Yeah. But, I mean, for example, he can Blessing of Kings or Cockhammer first, and Blessing of Kings the, co the Cockhammer target. So suddenly there's a Taunt Divine, well, Taunt won't matter too much, but the Divine Shielded uh, minion hitting really hard. What do you guys think about attacking with Acolyte into a minion first? Yeah, I was, a card? I was thinking we might see that from, from Naaman there. It's possible that he just values the damage uh, simply because he's you know, not necessarily going to be waiting until the Alexstrasza. This this Torch Mage deck is much more about assembling 30 damage than necessarily getting to Alexstrasza, then doing 15. So each additional point of damage does matter quite a bit, and it's very likely he'll still find opportunities to uh, to get the value from that Acolyte. Exactly, yeah. The idea is that those minions were going to die regardless because of the Blizzard. So you know what? My Acolyte's going to kill another three, uh, more three, uh, like one ones over the course of the next few turns. So here, it might not. You know, given, no, yeah, given now that, it might just die. Given <laughs> that there was the uh, the Acolyte, and he's, it's just going to clear off the Divine Shield here. So Naaman does end up getting one fewer card from that than if he had attacked a minion last turn. Let's, let's count the, the damage quickly. How much damage uh, is possible for, for the next turn, let's say. If you go for uh, Falnos, Fireball, Frostbolt, Icelands, that's uh, 16 points of damage. That's 26. I think it's 29 for sure. <laughs> no, that's, no, sorry, that was Bunny Hopper's life total. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I think like he might st start setting up a, a kill overall in, uh, in two turns. Is it possible? 16, uh, 26? I don't think he has quite enough damage. I think uh, it's actually quite short. Yeah, I think what he might actually do is go for something along the lines of uh, getting the ice block what? locked in maybe, but also that novice engineer, because that's, mm -hmm. that's why he plays the card. On eight mana, you, you do uh, drop a two drop, and then get an instant card draw. So if he draws Torch, then maybe he, his, uh, his play changes and maybe he does go aggressive then. But I think he'll definitely want to just uh, see what comes off the top first. Absolutely. And it is a Torch. And it is a Torch. And I think that's it, basically, because, well, Lothab can still block if uh, the spells that there's Lothab in the deck, but if you will go for the Torch now, like, next turn he can go for Talnos, Frostbolt, Iceland, Fireball to the face, and then just seal the game with the Pyroblast. Unless the block is being popped and he has to do something else. But if you would just torch this uh, turn instead, you will get the 26 and then 16 plus 10. I am not doing that kind of maths. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, am I right? Like, I've seen I, you counting. I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm trying to math mm -hmm. it out here. I think that would be 29 over the, the Thalnos uh, turn and the Pyroblast. I think that yeah. actually that does exactly add up. exactly 29. I think, it, I think it, it is in fact 29. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, it's not for sure, <laughs> but I think it's 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, the Fireball plus Frostbolt plus Ice Lance with Thalnos in play uh, is the... It, it is... 16. So options. 7 plus 4 from... <laughs> Matt is hard, man. Is it 16, well, though? <laughs> 7 plus 4 is 11 plus 5. 16 damage with Thalnos, and he has exactly 9 mana. <laughs> I, yeah. I think one of the key things here, though, is with Blessing of Kings, 
he can actually push for damage and mm -hmm. prop the block at least in, you know, in two turns. But whether that's going to be quick enough, you know, we'll find out. And uh, we'll see how Naaman actually chooses to play his turn out. But the Quest of Kings does go down, gets the juggle. Does he hit the 1-1? One -one? Oh, that's unfortunate. All right, so how much damage is it from uh, Bunny Hopper's side? It's uh, kills the one one, so takes one more damage. We got ten damage here, and that's getting suddenly a bit dangerous. Ice barrier. Well, if you ping the one one, eight twelve six. Well, th now he doesn't have enough damage to kill Bunny Hopper in two turns. Right. Yeah, he doesn't have the mana because uh, he yeah. he uh, did not choose to play the Forgotten Torch last turn. Did ping the minion. So, what let's have a six, seven. I'm just working out if he can Ice Barrier, Forgotten Torch, ping mm -hmm. this turn, and then, you know, do the following turns again, like maybe one turn a little bit late, mm -hmm. but whether that Ice Barrier will actually make enough difference, because that seven, seven, is uh, pushing for, for a lot of damage there, pretty much making that Ice Barrier disappear in one hit. Yeah, I think actually Bunny Hopper can break the uh, the block and barrier next turn, thanks to Coghammer yep. and the, the Juggler uh, off of even just his hero power. Yeah. Oh, that would be 16. So for Naaman right now, it's back to the plan where he just wants to deal with the board. And uh, draw some cards to prolong this game. Iceland's in a 7-7, protects the block. There is uh, the barrier as well. So yeah, the, the plan to, de to burn your opponent is gone uh, for this for the moment, but he can still uh, play the value game. Yeah, you can still draw Alex Strazer as well. So you know, that changes everything when you've got Pyroblast, Fireball, Frostball in hand. And really cool as well. Like he, he Recognize that the game's going to have to continue on longer than may maybe it originally planned. So he actually spends a lot of his cards as well, which means Divine Favor isn't going to get like super strong value mm -hmm. um, if he chose to hold on to more and maybe like just Ice Lance and then go face. Naiman is shaking his head, so it seems like he realized that that Forgotten Torch would be enough last turn. Uh, but to be fair, uh, you are stressed playing at this stage. And uh, when your opponent is at 20, what was it, 28? 29. 29, 29 like, for sure. Can yeah. you really like think, hey, I just have lethal in two turns. Should yeah, I, I think the thing as well is it is quite difficult to look three turns ahead in ways of dealing 29 damage over three turns. You know, that's not a very straightforward thing to do, especially when you're under so much pressure in a match like this. Absolutely, but it only shows the power of this of this Torch Mage deck, how much burst you can offer. Frost Nova is a really nice pickup. It will get, buy him one more turn. He just needs to draw a bit more. Like, Alex Straza is a great option. Uh, is there anything else that you guys can think of? To seal this game. Well, the Frost Nova is a, a really nice one. If he draws another Doomsayer at this point with that Frost Nova, he may be able to clear off his entire board. Yeah. Oh, I think as well, like if he um, if he draws Alex Straza. Yeah, oh, oh, there's there's that Doomsayer. Look at that. Kibler right wins this one. <laughs> oh yeah. my God, there's not an answer either. And it's so good because Bunny Hopper doesn't have any cards in hand. And even if he gets a Divine Favor, it's only uh, three cards in Naaman's hand. Yep, it's definitely going to be rough. I was going to say, if you drew Alex Straza, he could actually make the commitment to Alex Straza, uh, his opponent, mm -hmm. and then do like Frost Nova, Frost Bolt, uh, yeah. uh, Fireball the following turn, and then finish with Pyro. Um, but yeah, the, the team say it feels pretty good as well. Pretty reasonable. Yeah, so that entire gigantic board is gone. And Mad Scientist is a strong draw for Naaman here. It does represent his next ice block. We've seen double ace better already, right? Or have we seen? I believe it's just the I believe it's just the one that was played. Right, I think so there is. Well, yeah. it, it, it actually could be could be uh, the block as well. Though barrier against this particular deck is actually in many cases better than block. Yeah, simply because yeah. it represents they do so much their damage in such small increments. And we see Bunny Hopper drawing cards like South Sea Deccan. He's not going to draw you know mysterious challengers. You know he's not going to draw Tyrion. Yeah. So the the increments of damage are so small, and Naaman's ability to actually just kill so many of his minions in his deck with his hero power uh, means that this is a very safe spot for Naaman at this point. Yeah, I think Naaman's actually on a really, really important turn now. The, the Scientist is probably going to get dropped along with a ping, but then it's... I only have three burst cards in hand that do not add up to 27. Um, do I just have to use my mana and go for it and just hope I will cycle into more, or do I have to hold on and hold on? Because the problem is, and here we go, he's gone with the Pyroblast, okay? No, because man. he's decided that he might not draw Alex Straza for a long, long time, and he might have other ways to finish the game. Asserting dominance, Ooh. and there is this divine favor, so three more cards. Let's see if this is going to be Arden Squires and Master of Battle, as we mentioned. 
Consecrations to damage. She's a mini bot. Not bad. Sir Ooh. Finley. Oh, wow. That's an interesting one. If you get Steady Shot, that yeah, will be really Yeah, Steady Shot yelling. could be pretty huge. And also, by man, like you said about the Ice Spire, against this deck, it's you know a lot better because a lot of the minions just chip away uh, at the health. But with card, card like Consecrate, you can actually uh, bypass that if you proc the block low enough. Absolutely. Especially if he also gets Steady yeah, Shot. Yeah, Steady Shot on top of that is insane. Let's see what, uh, let's see what he's going to get. There's no way you don't... Oh, is he waiting at whether he hero powers first, then plays Finley? Yeah, if he, if he hero powers first, first, then plays Finley, then he can't use the new hero power. Ooh, armor up. Would you ever go for armor up? Armor up. <laughs> I, no, it's totally what he wants yeah. here. Because Naaman's deck is looking to assemble a certain total of damage, and that makes that a lot harder. Yeah. And, and also, because of the Pyroblast, Alex Trazo does almost nothing to Bunny Hopper now, yeah. and, but he can still heal well, up past it with the armor. Well, Alex Trazo does put Naaman to 15 and puts an 8-8 in play, which would well, be a big deal. That is something, I guess. <laughs> I think the most important part here is that Bunny Hopper not only puts uh, Naaman in a position where he has to defend himself, but also tries to protect himself at the same time, because overall, um, Naaman will have enough damage in this deck. I think it, it has oh, like 52 damage, like 50 true damage uh, across all the spells with the torches, but, um, well, 19 is not easy to go through. Yeah, the problem is time. Naaman yep. may have a lot of damage in his deck, but because Bunny Hopper has this mm -hmm. pressure on him, uh, he doesn't have anything close to the time he needs to assemble it all. All right, so now what do you do this turn? Do you just slam Torison uh, and get your block pop? Like, I don't think it does that much. Um, Mad Scientist is probably what you have to do. Yeah, Scientist does represent uh, a uh, ice block or ice barrier at this stage, what either of which you? is what very important for Naaman. Uh, though he does just choose to go with the Emperor. This this is does give him the ability to just play his entire hand in a single turn. He can, if absolutely necessary, play the Scientist and kill it himself, too. Yeah. The, the problem with playing the scientist that turn actually is he could have killed the si um he could have attacked him to low enough then killed the scientist and then That's used true. consecrate to actually finish yeah. the game afterwards. Mm -hmm. Well, consecrate is uh, enough here to both kill the Torison and pop the block. So a really good move from Bunny Hopper and uh, Naaman hoped that Torison might maybe survive and deal some extra damage there, but um, it's going down and uh, the block will be popped at one. So we might see the Mad Scientist Frostbolt into Mad Scientist to buy one more turn. Yeah, what's going to be a real struggle though is, uh, especially with this armor up hero power and the drop of the Shredder, buying yourself one more turn doesn't necessarily mean uh, Naaman can actually do anything about it, because almost no matter what he draws, he's just going to instantly be behind anyway. Yeah, he doesn't have the uh, the power of... Ooh, Blizzard is nice. Yeah, it does actually, actually stop the board and buy some time. He does not die with this Blizzard here. He, he's able to freeze the entire opposing board. He can play that Mad Scientist. I think you, though, ha I think you have to go face, though, with, with your spells. Like You can play yeah, Blizzard, Mad Scientist, and still have some mana left. Mm -hmm. So I, I think you almost have to just Torch Frostbolt. I think it makes sense. Uh, it puts a Forgotten Torch in back to your deck uh, that will be able to deal six mana. You can still draw into something like Alex Straza to bring you back to 16, uh, tr uh, to 15. Try to continue freezing the board, but then we've seen we've seen one Blizzard already, and we've seen seen double Frost Nova, I believe. Yeah, Naaman is is really low on ability to uh, continue. Oh, he does just ping and Blizzard, Mad Scientist. So what are the Frostbolt the yeah. face? This protects him from a possible uh, Cog Hammer or Must for battle. battle killing him. And yeah, second is, really nice. is second consecration in the deck? Probably not. I think mostly play, uh, people play only. Only one. Leopard no. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Uh, so he needs Alex Straza now, right? Yeah. Uh, he pretty much needs to draw Alex Straza at this stage. He could draw... Uh, no, he can't even draw a... a oh! Oh, 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 my God. Alex, that is and that's a huge Alex Straza. A, a huge draw that is huge on the screen, appropriately Do you, do you appreciate a dragon of that Absolutely. size, Absolutely. I think all dragons should be that size. <laughs> It's only appropriate. I think a second Iceland was possibly an out as well to just Iceland's Leper Gnome and kill <laughs> the rest of the board. Get something uh, easy to kill from, from Find the Treasure, but Alex Straza is definitely a that game is That was pretty much... Oh, and she, she was flying and then landed on the board. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, was pretty glorious. much the only card that gave Naaman a good chance yeah. to win no, in this, this game, is, this, right? is, this is suddenly a game. Yep. Not only does he, is he back at 15 health, but he has this 8-8 in play. And the, the problem is as well, he needs the juggle from the Shredder to kill the Alex Straza right? if that's the route he t he's taking, because he can't hero power for an additional juggle. Uh, wow, this is, this is really tough for Bunny Hopper. This game has been absolutely crazy. Yeah, a roller coaster of emotions. 
Okay, so if you go, he needs to kill Alex Straza and just go for long game. Oh, oh I like that. Like well. <laughs> David oh, is just laughing there. Total <laughs> wrench in everyone's plans. New card. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit worried how long this game will go on for because it feels like both plays are just extending so much. Well, this is, uh, we see 12 damage in Naaman's hand, but the problem is that Lightwell has to die. He has to kill that Lightwell. Fireball Lightwell. Lightwell. <laughs> And then you torch the three two and keep. Well, you the can attack into the three two if you want, but yeah, this you this could, you actually may want board. to keep your mat. This is yeah. a, a very yeah. bizarre situation of freeze mage, perhaps wanting to keep the repeat damage yeah. of the mad <laughs> scientist in play. Yeah, I think you you just torch and a uh, scientist on the zero five and then frostbolt maybe ju just the uh, the juggler to get it off the board and then just go all in on drawing those second uh, the roaring torches I think you for want the extra to, burst. I think you want to keep the frostbolt for second Iceland, I believe. So that's why what torch the juggler and fireball into the zero five. Uh, to, da to damage the face and pink face. This is the weirdest game I've seen <laughs> in quite some time. It is yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely amazing. And I, I would never believe that the, this, this kind of pot in such a great chance. Oh, he's just going face. Okay. I suppose he's hoping that, uh, although the light, oh, he's pinging oh, the yeah. light well. So, so pinging, yeah. pinging the light well does mean that it can potentially what? heal itself, and it does. It does. Oh, wow. So We're he does counter that. Oh, there's a second consecration. Well, that's, this is interesting because it does get rid of the repeat damage source. But it gives him another <laughs> but, secret. But now this light well's in play. Such a scary mid scientist. <laughs> he just has to ping the light well every single turn and hope for, yeah. the, yeah, hope for the best. But, but there is but, but he's just armoring up every turn. <laughs> the paladin with the light well armoring up every turn against freeze mage. Has this ever happened before? Well, and it's aggro paladin. <laughs> that's the best thing. And you oh have to torch God. face. Again, ping the light well. This game can go either way still. <laughs> this and game I, is awesome. Lady Le Leodrin, a Slyderin. No, oh, heals face. And there's oh. a Shredder. Shredder's actually really big as well. So what is the yeah. best card for Naaman? <laughs> he, has, he has another torch in his deck, yeah, but this... that doesn't, there's a fireball. So he's actually, he's not Slowly in range grinding. to win the game right now. I think, does he have to ping the Shredder? If he pings the Shredder, that lets him draw, it, it makes it more likely that the Lightwell actually heals something that isn't Bunny Hopper. And does give him the ability to. Yeah. No, he just pings face. Uh, if he. There would be six, eight, eight health. Heals itself, alright. Goes to eight. Goes to eight, and Frostbolt Icelands is possibly seven, and with the ping, it's eight. Yeah, That's his, why his ping Icelands isn't yeah. out, and his Roaring Torch isn't out at this point yeah. to win next turn. Oh man, this is so close. Uh, and this he does is, not have many cards left in his deck. He has two, draw, two more draws, right? I oh, yeah. that, that that's, it, that's it, oh, that's it, that's it. Oh. <laughs> so ping in the face right there. Oh, so David man. with the incredible comeback win on the back of that Alex Straza, nearly ripped from his hands by Lightwell, but <laughs> finishes it off and you see a grin in his face of that <laughs> ridiculous game. Look at that. Look at that. Just like, it's like, yeah, well. <laughs> you could almost say, I'm sorry, buddy. Hopper. Like, that was kind of weird, but I took the win, so sure. Oh, man. <laughs> I think it was the best game we've watched so far. That was the coolest game this weekend. Uh, it was, oh, that was outrageous. I love it. Yeah. In incredible, incredible. Armor up and light well from the aggro paladin <laughs> trying to survive and out heal the, the He's a mage. huge on Buddy Hopper's face. He lost that game. He's like, all right, no, that was cool, man. Yeah. That was I, cool. I can give this game to you. It was fine. I, <laughs> I had a lot of fun. <laughs> can definitely right. appreciate crazy games. Definitely the most fun I've ever had watching Freeze Mage. I'll tell yeah. you that much. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, so now for for Naaman, it's a uh, paladin. It's his last deck. Uh, it's the mid range paladin. We've seen it uh, before. So, how does it fare versus uh, this this aggressive paladin and versus warlock from Bunny Hopper? I, I honestly I can't really say exactly how it matches <laughs> up against aggro know. paladin. Mid range paladin versus aggro paladin is not something that we've seen in a while now. Uh, there's you know certain new cards and dynamics that could certainly change things. I, it is for sure uh, favored against the warlock deck. That's the reason that Naaman brought it to this uh, to this event. It, and also because it's, uh, it's matchup against the Secret Paladin as well. Absolutely. And uh, guys, if you want to support Bonnie Hopper, uh, use hashtag Bonnie Hopper, hashtag Naaman to, to support your players and let us know who do you think is going to take it. And uh, who do you guys, who, Raven, who do you think is going to take it? It's going to be really tough. I'd have to go with Naaman now because uh, just touching on the mid range Paladin again, because it has so many early defensive options. It has Creepers, Zombie Chow. It, the odds on him drawing those are so high yeah. against even aggro paladin. Sometimes it is so fast that it just runs away with the game. But if you can start like that and he has consecrates, uh, out of peacekeepers to stop blessing of kings, there's so many options to slow this deck down that I think he's going to do pretty well here. Yeah, I think that this is, while it's not necessarily the deck that he built this to beat, it's the kind of deck he built yeah. this to beat. Absolutely. All right, guys. Um, another game is starting. 2-1 for Naaman so far. This 
mid-range Paladin, will it shine the Paladin Wars? Well, that Zombie Chow in his opening hand is perhaps the most important card uh, that allows him to pressure his opponent's early minions. And this is just a great hand for yeah. Naaman oh, here. Oh, wow, yeah. The, the Zombie true. Chow into the Haunted Creeper, and then the uh, the Accolade of Pain. Again, this is one of those matchups where Accolade of Pain is fantastic because it not only threatens your opponent's one health minions, but also draws you deeper to morph cards. How important is it to, to go first or second in this matchup, Raven? Uh, I think the the aggressive deck normally always wants to go first because although you can coin out say two one drops, you still just have to follow out on curve. Whereas I think because the higher end of the Paladin deck is going to be like more impactful than the higher end of the, uh, sorry, the higher end of the mid range Paladin deck is going to be more impactful than the aggro, then you definitely want the coin on the, on the mid range variant. Yeah, the fact that you get to attack first is a big deal. Exactly, Your minions yeah. get to attack before your min opponent's minions can attack yours. Like here, exactly this. The the Leper Gnome's at least going to get an attack to face before it dies. Whereas if the Zombie Chow and play first, it would die immediately. So are you guys saying like both players are happy? Uh, Naaman happy that he got a coin and he's going second, and then Bunny Hopper happy that he's starting? Well, Naaman's certainly happy because he has a zombie chow in play against oh, an yeah. aggro deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a great boon. And uh, there is a Haunted Creeper as well with the Pilot Shredder. So looking at Naaman's hand, it looks great, especially versus aggro decks. Uh, but what about Bunny Hopper? Did he get what he wanted? Like he got a really good curve as well with Lepernome and Shielded Meebot, Master for Battle. Possibly Consecration. It doesn't look that bad. Like yeah. It seems like both players got what they wanted. Yeah, I think it's okay. I think, uh, obviously, uh, for Bunny Hop, he doesn't want to see that Zombie Chow. And the Consecrate, again, is it's going to be okay versus this board, but not amazing. That You probably just want more minions and just really just stack up the board and make name and actually have to do uh, some sort of large answer to deal with it. So yep. now Master for Battle can deal with the Zombie Chow and uh, Shiva Mini Bot, I believe, can just go face. Um, there is no reason to increase the damage on board, and uh, it's not like Hunter Keeper can do much unless you want to play around Shagler. And I think that this, you know, definitely the the, the play that uh, Bunny Hopper wants to make. And then this Acolyte though comes down, and this is a, a big threat that Bunny Hopper is going to want to deal with, so it doesn't just end up drawing Naaman closer to his cards like Consecration that can just totally seal this game. He picks up an, an Owl, which is a great uh, response to this Acolyte of Pain, but uh, is this the time to Owl, or do you just uh, abuse it and attack it with the 1-1 Raven? Yeah, it's a tough one as well, because he could also trade and then Consecrate to clear the whole board off. It would give the mm. Acolyte two draws, but uh, going back to the Owl, I think you need to save the Owl for something like a Sludge Belcher in this matchup, or a Tyrion, if that's what you're expecting later on. I think just getting through a Taunt easily is something that is just vital for Bunny Hopper winning this game. Yeah, he definitely is... Uh, really far behind if he does face a big taunt and doesn't have a huge board himself. He could use Abusive to do kind of a similar thing, uh, but I think that, that he's probably just going to be uh, happy to to trade into this Acolyte, giving Naaman just a single card. All right. Uh, he's thinking about Haunted Creeper, so... He might just want to play this Consecration is, the, is, is, an, is another option. Yeah, I think what's good here is if you Haunted Creeper and then trades into the Acolyte with an Abusive 1-1, one -one, um, what this does is it presumes Naaman's hunt, uh, Naaman's Haunted Creeper is actually going to attack in next turn. He's going to go for the Owl. Oh, yeah, the so Owl's the Creeper. Okay, okay so he, just, yeah. he, he, doesn't, he doesn't mind uh, giving Naaman the extra cards. He just wants to uh, keep going face as, uh, as strong as he can. That was really interesting, though, because what I was, was sort of halfway through saying is he would presume Naaman would actually attack him with his Creeper and then Consecrate next turn, because next turn he can Consecrate and then he, you know, he has held on to the... Uh, Abusive Sergeant as well, so that's really interesting that he chose to value the Owl uh, just locking down the Creeper there. Yeah, well, the thing is also that uh, Owl actually represents two damage on board, and we've seen before that Bunny Hopper is using his owl pre the Owls pretty aggressively in the early game. It is it is true that given the, the Owl versus Acolyte, as far as what you choose to silence, Bunny Hopper is valuing, and, and probably rightly so, frankly, his, his board presence and Naaman's board presence as an ability to react to this far more than the resources that Naaman is actually able to muster. Haha, <laughs> muster. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional. No, you didn't even laugh at myself. Then, no, uh, I, I, it's totally un unintentional. <laughs> That's why I, I uh, unlaughed at myself. But, <laughs> but no, and here, if, if Naaman had that, uh, that creeper, it would be able to attack into one of, the, one of the minions and then potentially threaten the other minions while yeah. the uh, Acolyte simply draws him more resources that Bunny Hopper's hoping to end the game before he has a time to, to leverage. Yeah, because to be honest, like Bunny Hopper is the king of the early game, and if uh, Naaman has more cards, he still is limited by the mana crystals every turn. That's an interesting tweet from uh, IMCVH. This is a pallid mirror without a single mysterious challenger <laughs> here in the semifinals. We've been saved. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what created a new meta game. Yeah. yeah. So the abusive plus consecration is going to wipe off uh, Naaman's entire board here. 
Okay. Um, there, but there is a second Sludge Belcher that Naaman killed off the top there. Yeah, but the Binding Helper still has Lotha, which is a, a really good card as a follow up. Uh, but then, yeah, Sludge Belcher is blocking that damage. Yeah. 15 health, no heals for now for Naaman. And, and what's kind of crazy about this is if this is a Define Favor draw. Oh! oh. Oh, guys, come you on. That was it. good. I didn't uh, even see the card. I, I uh, think it's still correct to play the low theft. Yeah, th this turn, but what this does is your opponent's on 15. You play low theft this turn, continue to push, and then the, the Divine Favor just almost guarantees you the follow up. You draw so yeah. many cards. Was this the long term goal with not silencing the Acolyte? I, I mean, did he know it's like Divine Favor is going to come into hand at the perfect moment? Well, I mean, if I, we so don't know point? if he's playing one or two Divine Favors. Yeah. You know they have Divine Favor in their deck. We haven't yeah. seen two in a game, uh, but. Oh, that's you, really you smart. Can, yeah, you can you can rely perhaps on drawing into divine favor before your opponent does have an opportunity to dump their entire hand. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I like, this worked out very well for Bunny Hopper. I like Lotha here, and I think you should attack with the two one at least uh, into Belcher, or do, do some attacks to maybe play uh, around consecration a bit. Oh, he's yeah, just clearing it. Yeah, I think clearing yeah. is fine because at the end of the day, even if it makes your overall board say. Uh, a bit more weak because it's just like one ones on the board now. Uh, but you just have that low there, but that low there is so much damage on its own and difficult to deal with, especially because spells won't be a, that much of a problem on turn six after a low there. And there is that consecration, but uh, overall, oh wow, some good the juggles there. Seven damage incoming, and there is the divine right. favor as well. well there's going to be four cards for Bunny Hopper here off this divine favor. Four cards for free mana. Oh, That's a good deal. Not bad. Not Seems bad. Seems reasonable. Yeah, better see. than a prep sprint. <laughs> <laughs> the Creeper, go. Master for Bottle. And there is favor. the second Divine yeah. Favor. So as we were saying, the uh, you know the, the fact that Bunny Hopper has the two in his deck makes that, that sequence of plays he made uh, definitely make a lot more sense. Absolutely. But the Cog Hammer is a, a big card here. Not only it fits the curve, but uh, it can also deal with the, the Juggler. And... Um, if, if it lands on one of the cards, it, it will be a taunt, so can protect this board for now. Yeah, this is really nice, and I actually wouldn't be surprised other than killing the juggler. Oh my god, it went on the low third. That's amazing. Um, other than killing the juggler, I wouldn't be too surprised to just actually go all face yeah. here. He's got so much damage. He has another divine favorite because he can probably splurge his hand next turn onto the board as well, so... He's got, he's got to pressure. put the Divine Shields off so the, uh, the minibots do die and present again just less onto the board, but he's in such a good position now. So what can Naaman do? Well, it's a pretty rough spot for him at this point. He doesn't have anything like uh, an Aldor for that 5-5. Five five. He's facing out a lot of damage, just 10 life. He could use his Iron Beak Owl and both of his Option. minions to clear off Lotha, but that doesn't leave him in a great spot regardless. Yeah, yeah. I think it might be his only option, though, because there's, what, the 5-6, there's 8 damage just on board, so I think you have to just clear Lothab. However bad it feels, you have to use this Iron Beak Owl just to remove the Divine it, it Shield. It is pretty crazy to play Owl Consecration and attack all your minions, yeah, and your opponent board. ends up oh, having sure. a minion left, and you have just the Owl. Yeah, yeah the weapon. <laughs> yeah, have we seen Lay on Hands from Naaman at all? I don't believe we've seen him draw it, no. Yeah. We've seen a, we've seen a heal bot. We've seen a heal bot. I think so the thing as well is, deck. because he's playing so many early cards, like double Creeper, double Chow, uh, and all those early minions, he has to make space for it somewhere, and I think Leon Hands might well have been one of the cards that was yep. cut from the deck for that. Right, well, and even decides not to not to just throw his entire board away, and uh, just plays the Shredder here. <laughs> Another cock hammer! <laughs> well, it can work. Uh, but is there something he can... Can he draw cards and draw into those uh, free remaining damage? Not really. But well, the problem is he, he can draw, but it would have to something like muster, creeper, draw, but then yeah. he can't have any mana he, he left. He can't really play, play the in, card. So. And, uh, I mean, he, he could just, you know, he's a 24 life. He can just go face with Lotheb and the the uh, the weapon if he chooses, then play Master. everything else. He can, yeah. pl he, he can Well, he could play, uh, it depends whether he wants to keep the, the two yeah. attack weapon or a one attack weapon. He can guarantee a divine shield on the Lotheb if he plays Coghammer first. Oh, yeah. So right. it's, it's a bit of a weird spot. I think it's a overall a great spot for Bunny Hopper for now. Oh, well, certainly, yes. Uh, if there is a Tyrion, does it solve the problem that Naaman, Naaman had? But, uh, but even though, I want to get back to the Naaman turn, where he could kill uh, Lothab with the Consecration. I think Pilot the Shredder was a bit better there because he, he was playing to win, not playing not to lose. Yeah, I, I definitely like Naaman's play. As I, I was discussing how, just how depressing his turn was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, about it earlier. Uh, he's, he's definitely putting himself in a, uh, in a better spot going, uh, going this route, but... Not great right now. Uh, there is still that Consecration that maybe can work. Well, Consecration will potentially allow him to uh, to clear through some of this because 
the, the Lothab is behind a Divine Shielded Taunt, uh, Naaman can't actually get through and kill the, uh, mm. the Lothab easily. He can, he can attack b uh, one of his minions into the Divine Shield, cast the Consecration, then attack the Shredder into the Lothab, but there'll still be the, the two minions from spiders. the, the yeah, Spiders as well. He, he could actually use Keeper of Alderman on the Lothab as well, so it yeah. requires a 2-1 and not the Shredder That's as well true. to attack. That is true. So, but it depends how he wants to manage the board, because sometimes Shredder's actually better because it trades and you still get a minion options. afterwards. So. Yeah. Yeah, he's a lot of options here. All right, so he's going for the Keeper to save his minion. Yeah. And be able to trade into Lothab, I believe. Okay, this this actually works out very well for him. He can trade the 3-3 the, the three, three into the... Uh, or No, he, he does choose to trade the Shredder. He's oh, an wow. Smith. That's Ooh, so good, actually. with these drops? <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty huge. Yeah, it uh, it will provide him with extra health, and for now he didn't have anything. He to he do. he would have been dead. He would have yeah, died. Just died. For Smith, he would have been dead to that abusive sergeant. He can still die. There is he can still die. Cards. Oh, oh, we see, we see something like pointing something. at that. Blessing it, 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 of kings. <laughs> see oh, a bit man. of a grin on Naaman's face, realizing <laughs> that he saved himself just briefly with that armor smith. But yeah. we are going to be going to game five. Game five for those guys, and the last decks for them will be this midrange paladin for Naaman and the warlock for Bunny Hopper. And uh, who has an advantage in that match? I mean, I, th I think that, it, again, I have to say that I think Naaman has an edge. This is the matchup that he built this deck for. Uh, those key minions like Zombie Chow, uh, just the ability to get a lot of minion pressure to contain his opponent's minions is exactly what this deck is built for. Yeah, and I think as well, because we saw a big game hunter, we've seen Aldar Peacekeepers, Keeper Voldemans. Sea Giants aren't going to be too much of an issue for him either. I, I just love the emotions of both players because this is game five and the winner goes to the final and has a chance to qualify for the world championship and the loser is eliminated and it's, it's so close from that final, right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is obviously a huge game for both these players and, uh, you know, both want to take it down. Absolutely. So, um, Zoo versus Midrange Paladin, right? It's just, this is like, like GVG just came out, you know? <laughs> this is what we were seeing all the time back then. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so what are the key cards for this matchup spe specifically? There is the Consecration versus Zoo. I think it's really important, but the Zoo can have a really uh, bursty opening with the Flame Imp and the follow-up of Dark Peddler. I think the early turns, the minions in the early turns are the most important cards. The cards yeah. like Zombie Chow. Uh, and I actually think that uh, Naaman's early turns are the most important, simply because there's more redundancy for Bunny Hopper. There's more one drops that he can play. Uh, and the the, uh, the presence of them is not as big a deal as the presence of a card like Zombie Chow. Absolutely. All right, guys, no more mind games with the deck picks. We are here, last game of this match, and there will be only one winner. So let's talk about those, those hands here. Yeah, so the Enhancer Meccano, definitely a sort of style choice for, for these uh, Zoo players. Um, it can pull out some crazy stuff, but I imagine we're going to see that get thrown away. But the Implosion is going to be pretty important as well, because unless there is a must, uh, a Consecration, sorry, Implosion can do a lot of work with uh, just trading for minions and uh, just trading up as well, which is what something uh, Zoo excels at. Well, Zoo is very good at trading up, but it's not as good at fighting against minions that go wide. And that's exactly what this Palanik does. It has a lot of sort of... Uh, low cost but resilient minions, uh, and ooh, we see the oh, shielded mini cut. Speaking of low cost resilient minions, that <laughs> is the best among them. Yeah, I think like overall, Naaman got the amazing hand. The shielded mini bot to start with knife juggler and master for battle follow up. He will be dominating in this board. Bunny Hopper picking that part overwhelming. That is important because he had nothing to yeah. buff those, e those eggs. Yeah, the eggs were not necessarily what you're looking for uh, in this particular matchup, especially if you don't have ways to, to actually actually trigger them, where Bunny Hopper, that uh, power overwhelming will give him the ability to potentially kill the knife juggler we, we know Naiman's going to play next turn. Yeah, I think the problem as well is that the eggs uh, combined with a Leroy and a Lothar, yes. right? You know, there's just, <laughs> if, if they had a Flame Imp, then yeah, sure, they're fine. But um, this Owl's going to be awesome. Like, it's going to yeah. just silence off the egg. And I imagine he's going to trade with because a lot of the problems as well is even though the egg won't spawn a 4-4, the zoo can still use it with a beastly sergeant to trade. And yeah, Na Naaman recognizing, yeah, there's a lot of things that can go wrong if I just play exactly, Knife Juggler yeah. here. He's he's playing this to uh, try and ensure that Bunny Hopper doesn't have the opportunity to play cards like that Power Overwhelming to take advantage of them. Absolutely. Even picking the uh, True Silver Champion, which will be great uh, in the mid game. Uh, and uh, you might want to play Master, but uh, after Master, you, you will not care about Light Justice that much. Yeah, and this is to be honest, all go in Naaman's way. Um, he has muster this turn, um, but I... Hmm. Can he? Oh, can no, he just okay. kill... Like, I can actually play Aldor, I think, uh, unless you really are afraid of the sea giants, but uh, if you just kill the egg, play Aldor, mm. 
and uh, and keep pressuring. That's a good. I, I think the only thing is you have true silver next turn for for the four four. So I think you don't need to rush it too much. I kind of like mustard because you want a big board, as you said, right? You, you want to build the board up against Zoo because they have no good ways of dealing with it at all. So you build the board up this turn, and uh, you can true silver down the egg next. And he's going for the peacekeeper. This is really interesting. Yeah. Well, this this does allow Naaman to uh, just continue to push for damage and develop this board. It will leave his uh, his owl open to getting killed by this one four here. Uh, I, I, I might have played Muster there, but I can definitely see uh, what Naaman is going for. Absolutely. I, I mean, it played around Power of Overwhelming, and it, it, when mm -hmm. you see double Nerubian Egg, you can't expect Power of Overwhelming in the hand. Yeah, Power of Overwhelming killing one of his, you know, killing his Owl on board, you get a 4-4 that you play the True Silver into. It. Yeah. I think one, one of the things that might have uh, lent, lent him towards that line of play was the fact they had Knife Juggler yeah. as well. So, turned five, it's like a, a mini Juggler unleash the Hounds, right? So, it's like he can play Knife Juggler and Muster for battle on turn five to actually clear up some of the lower minions. So, that might have been the line of play. Yeah, one big thing with that specifically is is that that's a great answer to an opposing implosion. Yeah. That uh, Naaman here, he's clearing out his opponent's board and just you know spreading uh, spreading as wide as he can. Again, playing around those minion into power overwhelming buff style starts, and uh, this is looking great for Naaman. It's looking uh, amazing for Naaman, especially because Bunny Hopper has a lot of reactive cards that Zoo has that require some kind of board like Gormok. Uh, and hence the Meccano and Leroy, which normally you do not play Leroy, especially if there's a, a there is a Juggler on board. Uh, a really tough si situation for Bunny Hopper. Yeah, and this highlights one of the main reasons that the community seemed to be very split on Enhanced Meccano. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just win with it, you know, you just drop it down on a big board, it's game over. But when you don't have that board in the first place, it's very, uh, very lackluster. But that's actually a great description of every card in Bunny Hopper's hand. Yeah, right pretty now. much. Oh, yeah, come on. And, oh. and, and this is this is precisely why this deck that Naaman is playing is is very strong strong in this matchup because he's able to prevent the zoo deck from being able to assemble this strong board and uh, you know, just able to pr keep those cards just dead in their hand. And look at this damage. Like, Naaman should have lethal next turn with all those minions and the True Silver Champion and on Consecration on top of that. Can Bunny Hopper survive next turn? Uh, he, he did just draw a ton. That, that, that does something. <laughs> that, that's a thing. Um, I think the problem is. If, <laughs> wow! <laughs> I think the problem is even if Bunny Hopper survives, I think it doesn't really. All it will, yeah, it will delay the inevitable at this point because um, Na Naaman can pretty much ignore a lot of the stuff Bunny Hopper does that anyway now because he's just so far ahead. That true silver does so much work. He can just tempo heal bar that you know get the two health, but just add another minion onto the board just because why not at this point? We'll give him an attack into low and get the health back. It's not even a tempo oh heal bar. Getting God. value. Full value <laughs> trade. Because that's what's important right now, yeah. getting that value. <laughs> yeah. He just wants to finish the game on full health. That's, yeah. the, that's the trick, isn't The it? flawless victory. Yeah. It's like, who is the zoo now? <laughs> oh, he's yeah. so crazy. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at the smirk. <laughs> Very, very good mannered greets him right back. Oh, there it is. Oh, and the knives are gonna fly. Kill Leroy. Oh. So first oh, knife, second will knife, kill Leroy. Is killing Did he get him? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the flawless <laughs> victory ends with nothing in play. And Naaman <laughs> takes it. Naaman's joining ba uh, Dr. Hippie in the final yeah, of we, the Europe Winter Championship. We saw these two players meet yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Naaman cannot head there. So it'll be interesting to see just how this rematch unfolds. Absolutely. That yeah. was that was such a great match. That, a, that, was, match. that was incredible. It was a crazy <laughs> set as well. And what I really like about it is both players, win or lose, were clearly enjoying those games. Like, yeah. The fact that you just threw the Leroy out at the end and be like, let's just see if the dribblers kill it. That's, that's <laughs> what I'm going to choose to end this match. I really like that. Both players are uh, overall having fun. Absolutely. And uh, actually, we have Dan waiting with Naaman at the very moment. And I want to hear some uh, some things from him. So Dan, take it away. All right, our second finalist here at the Europe Winter Championship, it is Naaman from Kazakhstan. Uh, Naaman, that series was insane to say the least. Lots of crazy things back and forth. Walk me through the emotions that you were feeling as there were some crazy ups and downs. Yeah, like for the whole game, the whole, I think like four games, in every game there was some sort of RNG and uh, really awkward situations. It was really fun to play, especially against Bunny Hopper. Yeah, it's great that you can take a step back and just realize that even though there's a lot at stake, there's like some absurd stuff happening and you can really enjoy the game. So that was really awesome. I want to get a, a, a temperature reading of your own play. How well do you think you're playing right now going to the finals? And do you think it's good enough to beat Dr. Hippie right now? Yeah, I mean, I don't usually do so many mistakes, but playing as a freeze mage, I did really, really badly. But in other matchups, I did pretty well.
You're one step away from becoming the Europe champion, the first of its kind for 2016, and achieving all of your goals of not only being the champion, proving you're the best, but also winning for a fiance. What's going through your head right now as you get ready for the finals? Uh, well, I'm not really thinking about the game. I just want to start it as soon as possible, and hopefully I'm going to win. All right, and do you have anything you want to say prior to starting the finals and get ready for the break? Mm, готовься к бою. All right, so there it is. The finalist number two here is going to be playing Dr. Hippie. It's an all Eastern European finals. Looking forward to see what's going to happen. Let's head over to the sidebar where TJ, Savitz, and Sato are ready to break down that action of that amazing series. Thank you very much, Dan. Once again, a big congratulations to Naaman. That was one of the greatest best of five series that I've seen in a long time. I think Naaman summed it up uh, pretty perfectly in saying that uh, a lot of awkward moments that made for uh, a really fun match. So we're going to get into the analysis in just a second. But in order to properly be able to analyze this first clip that we have, I have to ask you guys a very specific question. It's v, so I'm going to come to you first. What piece of the Druid combo is your favorite? Force of Nature or Savage Roar? Well, it obviously has to be Savage Roar. Such a great card, such a powerful card. All you need to do is have a couple of minions on the board, and that's six damage for uh, for three mana. Or you can combat with the force, but Roar is the key card for sure. Saddle. Is there a third option? <laughs> is is there a gun to my head right now? These, Do I have to pick one? These are the only two options that you have. Uh, all right, I'm gonna go for Force of Nature. All right, well, reluctantly, as thousands of viewers were triggered all at the very same time, we want to get your guys' thoughts at home. What is your favorite piece of the Druid combo? Is it hashtag force of nature or hashtag savage or make sure you tweet at HCT to get in your vote. And now with that out of the way, let's take a look at the clip that we were getting that ready for uh, as we pull it up. This is from game number one. Uh, this is sort of just a sort of a cute clip here. Uh, a lot of people I, I know didn't spot this lethal right away, uh, but Savit, since you were wrong in your choice, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and have you break this one down for us here. Yeah, so that's actually a pretty simple lethal terror. For some of the newer viewers, it, it's more common to see the Keeper of the Crow being played as a as a de deal to damage to your opponent's minion or silence a, a death rattle minion from your opponent, but it does also work like we saw here. You can silence your own minions when they have debuffs on them to be able to deal more damage with them or get them back to their full potential. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying Savage Roar wouldn't have been lethal there. Force of Nature was, so score one for Team Force of Nature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't, I don't want to even want to be a part of either of those teams. But yeah, Force of Nature or Savage Roar would have been, I think, like nine damage or something in that situation. So, um, if you voted for Force of Nature, you were in fact correct. Oh no! There's the poll results there, and it looks like uh, most people favor Savage Roar, which now thousands of, of triggered viewers are also wrong about their, about their vote. So, uh, now they're going to be double triggered. All right, well, let's uh, uh, thank you guys for, for voting and participating in that fun little poll. But let's take a look at, at one of the second clip, and this one's a little bit... Uh, more serious, I suppose. This was a, a right. controversial point in the series, and the the cashers on the desk uh, were were struggling <laughs> to to find the correct amount <laughs> that the burn damage. So, uh, Sato, I'm going to have to ask you here uh, because we were talking backstage during this clip, and you were right. counting aloud very angrily. Yeah, there was a, a lot of confusion going on here as to how much mana they had, how much damage everything did. So you see, the novice engineer gets played here, draws the roaring torch, but that's not relevant. The the maximum play on the following turn with nine mana is blood mage, fireball, frostbolt, ice lance, which is four plus five plus seven. 16 damage, followed by the Pyroblast the following turn, which is 26. So what he could not have done is the two-turn burnout over two turns, but Savitz, you may be able to discuss something a bit longer than that. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to freeze it right here so you at home can count the exact amount of damage as well. Savitz, why don't you go ahead and break it down a little further? So that play that the, the casters also analyzed quite a bit, so if he went for the roar instead of the being last turn, that would have worked out brilliantly. There would have been three plus that 26, and uh, there's no true silver champions in the that Acro Paladin, instead he's playing two Gog Hammers, so that would have been an amazing play, but, but what happened from, for Nyman there is that the rope was already burning when he threw the, threw the uh, Forgotten Torch, so at that point he was, even though it's a, certainly a math that he could have done if he had more time, he was unable to adjust to the, to the 
like the, the, to react to the draw of yeah. the forgotten dodge uh, to make the the play that would have uh, probably been more successful in in, uh, in most of the scenarios in the long run. Yeah, and that that matchup ended up being a crazy matchup, which came down to you know light wells and just all sorts of crazy shenanigans at the end there. Yeah, that, that matchup was so insane. The freeze mage play was so intense that Hell actually froze over and Brian <laughs> Kibler himself praised a freeze mage game for its excitement levels. Yeah. You, you know things are a little bit crazy <laughs> when Brian Kibler actually admits to the entire world that he enjoyed a freeze mage game. But once again, thank you guys for joining me to break down that last match. We do have the grand finals coming up, but before we have the grand finals, we do have a very special announcement. We are going to be revealing the brand new Whispers of the Old God card uh, right after uh, we take a look at the highlights from that last match.